first day of the second castle test match against the West Indies South Africa the home team against the West Indies South Africa one down in the series having lost the opener in uh, Port Elizabeth just a few days ago it's a very very tight schedule these cricketers will be playing 15 days of test cricket in 20 which is a hard ask at the best of times the news here is uh, the West Indies have won the toss Darren Ganga is opening the batting with his captain Chris Gale who will take strike it will be Dale Stain to bowl the first ball from the Weinberg end Neil McKenzie is into the South African side after lots of really good performances this summer he's not played in 38 consecutive test matches he's not played for three years and nine months he last uh, represented his country 2004 against New Zealand in Auckland but he's going to have to wait to perform because South Africa are in the field playing his 42nd test match today Neil McKenzie and uh, that is the only change in the South African team with me Geoffrey Dujon just one change in the West Indies Geoffrey good morning to you morning Jackers morning to all our viewers and a happy new year to all and the West Indies choosing to include Raul Lewis in the final 11 in place of Darren Sammy. And they'll stay in right on target first ball. Gale off the mark. He only wants the one, didn't even consider the second. Have to hurry here. Yeah? He gets in. Prince the fielder. good looking pitch it really is good grass cover throughout very consistent throughout pretty dead grass it has to be said but uh, just looks a nice uh, nice surface I don't think there's any doubt that the new ball will uh, have some have something to say in this test match throughout the test match probably there appear to be some runs in this pitch the average first innings total is 329 so things get easier I guess as the ball gets older End of the second over, five without loss. That was a quick ball. That was all Dale Stain, not too much help from the pitch. He is capable of this kind of pace. One got on to Darren Ganga a little bit quicker. I think there was a bit more effort in that delivery. Carry doesn't st appears to be looping. Gone, caught by Boucher. Well deserved wicket for Stain. He's bowled pretty well this morning. He's got the ball in the right areas most of the time. And this time he finds the outside edge of Ganga's bat. Well, he got the delivery before to bounce Dale Stain. And Ganga may be a little late coming forward to this one. Outside edge. And a good catch from Mark Boucher. Good piece of bowling. South Africa get the first wicket. Ganga goes for three. It's 12 for one. Be very pleased about they didn't achieve this in the uh, in the 
this test match when they chose to bowl first. Marco Morton, the new man in. He's playing his 12th test match, not a great deal of experience, only averages 23 at this level. 350s he scored in uh, previous 11 games. So this West Indian batting lineup tried and tested. Come down on that in time. Five overs gone now. Twelve for one. Still every squaring gang up. Not if you watch that front foot, not much of a stride forward. He'd been pushed back onto his stumps by the previous delivery. And this one doing just enough to take the outside edge. about you Jeffrey but I've got a funny feeling this might not have been a bad toss to lose well, four by is signaled a wild one from Dale Steen Past the stumps down the leg side was still swinging. Didn't give Mark Boucher much of a chance. That's a good shot. Very full, and Chris Gale has not quite had the opportunity to free his arms yet. Got the chance then. Well, he's a hitter, is Gale. And if you give him something to hit, he's going to take advantage. So, what you've got to do is keep it on the line and length. He doesn't like being uh, kept under pressure. He wants to get on with it, he wants to hit it, and that's just a rank half volley that you can't miss. But if you put enough balls in the correct areas that are difficult for batsmen, sooner or later they're going to make a slight mistake and nick it. But if you keep giving someone like Gale a long hop for half volley, then he'll smack it, because that's the way he thinks. He's gone at that. And he's hit it really well. That's probably off a length as well. Watch a shot to finish the over. 34 for one. You see, someone like Gale plays a shot to the last ball of the last over off a good length ball. You've just got to put your hand up. Don't get upset about it. It's a good shot. He's taking a risk. Look, that's a good length. That's a real risky shot. He's played a great, exciting shot. Fine, just put your hand up and say, fine. I'll bowl it there again. And if he keeps hitting two or three like that, well, you, you just have to accept that. What you don't want to give him are the half volley that he got before that. Make him come and take a chance. If they keep having to take chances, this West Indian batting lineup is not that good. OK, they got a win in the last test because they play better than South Africa. But really, it's a batting lineup that if you bowl anything like, you should be able to bowl them out. But you've got to bowl well. You've got to bowl discipline. You've got to keep your concentration. You've got to show patience. You know, normally you talk about fast bowling with aggression and pace. But I think many people forget that the great fast bowlers have an ability to concentrate, to show patience. They're not going to bowl everybody out with every ball the bowl. Wrap on the glove. And Uncle Morton I might have just got another one there. Trying to play a pull shot. It's tough times. There's a good covering of grass on this Newlands pitch. And you expect that the ball will do something off it. Despite the grass being brown and I suppose dead. Still some mat on there. So the seam will get some purchase. play and that was good cricket really good cricket it's a shame that he gave away a run but he was very quick the bowler there see that shot from from gale was poor he was looking to hit what was a good length ball 
And you've got to take that as a plus as a ball. Say, huh, I got that in a good area, and he's looking to hit it, and he changed his mind, he got out of jail. Yeah, this is a look at, yeah, there's the shot you're talking about. It's not there to cut, he's looking to cut. And then thinks of a single, and Renarko Morton is sent back. Elstein hits the stumps, but he's, he's always back. He's more evading the ball and afraid he's going to hit on the, get hit on the back of the head than anything else. So no trouble. I'll stay just one wicket down. But the West Indian change him more. They're thinking, oh, it'd be nice if Captain Chris Gale just calmed down a little bit. Impossible. <laughs> he's a dangerous player, not necessarily a very good player, but he's very dangerous because he hits balls. He likes it there, Urinaka Morton. He's played that quite well. Not able to reach the boundary, though. It's a good shot, slightly on the up, a lot of bottom hand. Out of catch it, there's a man there, but there's no way he's going to catch that. It's a fantastic shot, and I'll remind you, that boundary is the long boundary. Cleared it with ease. Well, I've seen this shot a lot of times from Gale. He's a good puller of the ball. Um, it's this short of length. I know Natini's got some pace, but he stays on the back foot. He's looking for it. Yeah, he's ready, waiting for that. So for Chris Gale, it doesn't matter if it's a 2020 game or a test match. He smashes. I don't think he has to change his game. I think he just thinks uh, every ball is bold to be hit. And I mean. What would be a concern for me if I was the African captain with Nell Bowling? The ball's not doing so much now, if you notice. It's not really doing anything. We've only had about an hour's cricket. Yeah, that change. Ooh. Remember, I, I spoke about the ball being changed and not being the chosen ball to use. So maybe the characteristics of this one are slightly different. That's a good shot. It's on the up as well. He likes to free the arms, Renarko Morton. Yeah, well, our score has just given me the oval. He got 105 off 87 balls, did Chris uh, Gale. That's the way he plays. Morton, you've got to keep it tighter than that. Yeah, that, that's too wide. You're just giving him width all the time. Well, it's, I don't suppose it's uh, any rocket science. It's, uh, it's basic lengths. We saw the wicket of Darren Ganga. That's around about that kind of length what Chris Gale can do to you you know he's that he's a very gifted player very very talented and uh, he does hit you off your length so but he's got to do it off your length that's the risk he takes basic cricket by South Africa not like that that's a juicy R volley and it's dealt with severely or well, Renarko Morton we saw him on the front foot. He's very strong against South Africa. Hey, he played some delightful shots in the first innings. Exactly like this. If you push the ball up to him, he's going to punish you. That's where he's looking to score all the time. What a great shot that is. Oh, it's all timing. Superb. Very, very good shot. It's a slow outfield. There are two fielders back on the boundary. One at square leg, one at fine leg. He bisects them neatly. Just playing that off the hip, timing it beautifully. Andre Nell struggling here. The previous delivery, he was just showing mid off that he feels he's falling away. Ball's not coming out as he'd like it to come out. Beautifully bowled. That's what it, uh, Andre Nell can do around the wicket. He's the only bowler that uh, can bowl around the wicket and at the same time getting to ball to go away from the left-hander. 
Just a little bit of swing there, and uh, that's a good length. We talked about this during the first test match as well. As a left-handed batsman, it's very difficult to know exactly where your off stump is if the right-arm bowler comes around the wicket and still has the ability to move the ball away from you. Poor stroke. Jack Cullis does it again, as he so often does. Renaco Morton giving his wicket away at a time when the West Indies were looking good. The breakthrough that South Africa needed. And quite right, it is a poor shot. Man back, halfway, exactly for this. He's got it up there and uh, didn't quite, quite uh, get all of it. And straight down in Teeny's throat. And the reaction of Renaka Morton says it all. Well, 23 he's gone for. It's 71 for two. Marlon Samuels played an uncharacteristic innings in the first test match. Normally he's a very aggressive attacking player, but he was very responsible, played very well at a time where his side needed him to buckle down, and he did. Well, speaking to Emilio, that's 71 for two. Here's that dreadful shot again, going for it. Didn't middle it, and Antini makes no mistake. Well, Graham Smith placed Antini deeper at middle, particularly for the shot, or especially for the shot, and Morton obliged. Chris Scale then. So 46. Out! Beautifully caught! Beautifully caught by Mackenzie. And what a wicket this is. Well, it was actually well bowled. He pitched it up and wide. He got Gale with his injured leg just sort of poking at it. It was at a sort of indeterminate shot. If you watch carefully, it doesn't really go after it. It's a sort of, yeah, the feet never move. And... I don't know whether that has anything to do with his uh, lack of footwork because of his injured leg, but he's certainly a very smart catch and thought a very good, thoughtful piece of bowling. So Chris Gale, 46 then. Must be 77 now for three. And that's just the wicket that Jeff Boycott was talking about. That's just nudged now South Africa ahead. And could they? 25 minutes might nip out another one. You got to get this guy out. His batting might look a little ungainly, but I'm a big fan. I think he's batted well all his career for West Indies. I saw him play his first match in uh, Guyana. He was only about 16, 17. And uh, it's about runs in the bank. It's not about how you look, it's how many runs you get for your team. Doesn't matter how you get them either, just get them on the board. So if uh, South Africa have got to really go after him, they've got a great chance. This is 20 minutes before lunch, come straight out after lunch if he survives. He's the big wicket now. We'll start round the wicket to him. Rolls quite well round the wicket, Andre Nell. Bowled him out for a hundred and uh, 104, an absolute jaffer. But this was uh, the end of Chris Gale. Just pokes at it, pushes at it, doesn't really do anything, doesn't try to hit it, doesn't defend it. It's a nothing shot, isn't it? It's just a little firm push without any footwork. It doesn't matter, it's out. Dropped it. It came quickly. He was in his follow-through, Makai and Dini stuck his right hand up, and those normally either stick or not. It was not this time. They're the hardest catches to take, these ones as a bowler. Coming back at you, you're off balance. You just stick a hand up. Sometimes they just stick. 
momentum is uh, going forward and uh, didn't even have a chance to get both hands on it. Nevertheless, it goes down as a chance. I was reading an article on, on the wires, as you tend to do before the games. You want to see what everybody's saying about what's going to happen and how things have gone and the reactions from what has happened. And Tony Cozier wrote that the confidence that South Africa was developing into a force ready to tackle Australia on equal terms has been eroded by one loss. It's true to a degree because there's a sense of anxiety and not quite panic, but anxiety around. There's no doubt. Here's a reaction time. Yeah, judge for yourselves there, folks. Those of you who thought you might have taken that catch. Oh, he's put down a dolly. <laughs> shot. That is a beautiful shot. It's a tough outfield to get four on if you hit it all the way along the ground, but that was time to perfection. Oh, and he's just lollied it, lollied it up there, is Mackay and Teeny. Real sort of a floater. Scramble seam, and that scrambling all the way to the fence. Beautiful shot. Didn't run it uh, at, the, uh, at the start. Look at him admiring the shot and then realizing, hold on a second, I might have to. Eighty-nine for three. Let's do the slips. It's got good legs on it. There's a couple after it. Oh, just don't get there. It was a good race. Four more to Chandapal. Well, maybe De Villiers uh, emulating Brian Banner there. Flying across that boundary rope. Look at this. Nearly didn't get there, but look at A.B. De Villiers fly here. What an effort. That's great commitment over the... Oh, in the corner. He's hit that, let me tell you. Hit that with a lot of power. Well, this is probably the first genuine bad ball that... Kayantini has bowled in this spell. It's not a fast wicket and gave Marlon Samuels more than enough time to get into position. And he hit that sweetly. Good delivery again. 114 for three. Batting well and not too sure about that. He's not too clever about that, Monty, although he's getting a bit better. That's a top shot, driven strongly off the back foot. Oh, good piece of fielding there. Abit de Villiers for the second time in this match. Trying to pull off a spectacular dive, and it looks like he did it this time, but uh, a little bit dangerous. Gives it all he's got. He's a very good fielder. He's very quick across the ground. Despairing dive, yeah. Tough to tell if that uh, went into the boundary, but he makes contact with the advertising board, so that's not going to do him any good at all. He looks fine, fortunately. Airborne, that one is over point. Goes to the boundary, so 45 overs gone now, 125 for three.
Well, this is a lucky, streaky shot that can't say he really meant that to go there. And that's been part of his batting all through his international career. Moment he's in a good seam, things are going for him, but other times that will get him out. There's a shout. They're going, they're going again. No. Umpire Russell Tiffin says no. The crowd were going as well. Here we have another look at that. And no real change in the in the seam as it came down the road. One of sea boundaries being hit. Shot. This should get to the boundary. It's shorter straight. There were oohs and ahs because it might have been a catch, but it was hit very straight. And Andre Nell could not have got to that. Well, he's a good time of the ball, Marlon Samuels. And he certainly hit that with power. Even in slow motion, Russell Tiffin didn't have a lot of time to get out of the way of that one. Don't be too unhappy with that as a bowler here. Yeah? Playing away from the body and just a bit of extra bounce there. Could find the edge, couldn't, didn't really control it. But when the ball is short, the pitch is so slow that the batsman has a chance to adjust. So once he's got good hands, like Marlon Samuels does, there's that time to adjust. One hundred and fifty one for three there, the splits for the fifties, one hundred and thirteen for the third one. So just a touch quicker than the second, but it's been hard work to get the runs. Short, wide, cut away and four. Must put it away when it comes. Seem to be expecting this to turn into the bat, Paul Harris. It didn't. Chandler Paul had the room to give it the treatment. Came on to him very slowly. Was able to hit it in front of point. Has hit that very well as well. So a couple of boundaries in a row is putting it on. Paul Harris here. It's just before tea time too. You expect that he'd play for tea and ensure that he's still batting at tea time. But there's a big gap on that onside. You want it to be 159, those 10 runs have come now. You can call the score now. That's a good shot. I don't know how quite he's got it back over the bowler's head that straight from around the wicket. I do open the face slightly on it. Again, the ball just stopping in the outfield. Well, I've never seen the outfield this thick. Some bare patches, uh, which means that it's not dead grass, but uh, where the lawnmower has gone over, where it's just too thick. Bravo, Rand and Lewis to come. Never, ever seen it this slow. The players were telling me this morning when I was out in the middle that yesterday. That might get to to the boundary, it's another no ball this time from round the wicket and uh, Samuels does well, clears his left leg gives himself room to bring the bat through the line of the ball well Staines having a word there to Samuels, I don't think that's going to really have any impact, another no ball, he's sixth 
Stain will know that he is in a real battle here. Man back on the hook. Gone for it, and he's got four for it. Beautifully controlled, that stroke. There are two men back, as uh, Alan's described, but Samuels is in control. He might have had a little word there as he just got close to Dale Stain in terms of going to fetch it. And I'm, I'm afraid to say, at the moment, there's one winner here. Stain is not in control of him, his emotions right now. Brings up the 100 partnership between these two. And now a no-ball. That's his 50. It's ninth 50 to go along with the one century made against India in 2.02.03. It's fourth against South Africa, however. Beginning to enjoy the South Africans. Well played, Marlon Samuels. Gone. A healthy edge. It just straightened the touch. And Tini normally comes into the right-hander. And a very welcome wicket for the South Africans. Well, this is a perfect delivery. Absolutely gorgeous delivery. Third ball of a new spell, you see, straight away. He pitches outside off stump. He has to play. It's a foolish length. Doesn't really do a great deal wrong. Perhaps a little late coming into the shot, but that's a good ball. It just holds up from wide of the creek. Top class delivery, disappointed, but he can't blame himself. 183 for four. Dwayne Bravo comes to the crease. 183 for four, the West Indies. South Africa desperately needed that wicket. Partnership of 106 between Samuels and Chanderpaul. There's a look at his career. Average of 33. Likes to attack. Doesn't like to be kept quiet. Dwayne Bravo, but he'll have to apply himself and work really hard for his runs on this wicket. It's not been easy. Here's the wicket of Marlon Samuels. Classy delivery, this. Just runs his fingers over the ball. He pitches and just goes the other way a little bit, just holds up. No disgrace in getting out to that. That's a quality delivery. This is the guy they got to get out. Bravo, now. Get into the tail. Out. Out. Simple as that. Beautifully bowled. You can't bowl much better than that. We've been saying all along, get one, get two wickets. And the scoreboard changes very quickly. And he's bowled two great deliveries. Lovely line, fullish length, make the batsman play up. Balls which appear a little wide, but because he stays wide of the crease and teeny, they have to play at it. Neat catch, slow down. Not too difficult, but still has to be caught. Good cricket there from South Africa. 185 for five. It's gone for none, Dwayne Bravo, and he'll be upset with himself. Dinesh Ramdin, the West Indies wicket keeper, walks to the wicket as they look at his career. 21 test matches and an average of 22.74. You look at wicked keepers around the world and they contribute greatly in the batting and it's important here for Ramden to contribute.
be happy with that. Something on his pads can get himself off the mark. No such luck for Dwayne Bravo. The angle doing him. Always going towards him, that ball from wide. I'm not sure whether I'd have that deep mid on for Chandler Paul. I mean, he doesn't really look like wanting to hit the ball over the top, so just giving him an easy one. No pressure on him at all. 200 up for West Indies as well. Well, it could be that they want to pull mostly at Ramblin. Chandra Paul certainly isn't going to hit it down there in the air. It's not, that's not his game. That's not the way he plays. So, this is the man they want to focus on. They're going to have a better chance of getting him out. Quicker delivery was the arm ball. That's nicely driven. This one may go all the way. It's being chased by Harris, who can't overhaul it. Nice firm shot. Genuine cover drive from Dinesh Ramdin. Another look at this uh, shot. It's an excellent cover drive. Picks the gap at extra cover. So that's uh, 75 overs gone now. 205 for five. so much time to hook that and he's put it away for a rare boundary he sat up and looked at him are pitches in South Africa getting slower or not this doesn't look a uh, I've seen Newlands a little bit quicker than this and I'm talking about the first morning not necessarily you know fourth or fifth day we expect that the sun's beating down etc it gets dried out first morning is usually a bit more pace I agree with you and I, I think in general the pitches are getting just that little bit slower. I don't know the reasons. Um, I don't know nearly enough about the preparation of pitches. Um, the wear and tear on this ground, I've, I've not seen this outfield look as patchy and, and, and be as slow as it is for, for as long as I've lived in Cape Town, which is 20 odd years now. Well, the West Indies pitch has got slower. I mean, I did three major tours there playing for England, and the first one was like light did. Had Wes all pushing off the side screen in Jamaica, Kingston, with that cross swinging round his neck. It was running in, he got mesmerised. <laughs> 2 13 for five. Chander Paul on 49. Make that 50. Gets past Harris. Not the most athletic of fielders, and that's the sixth test match in a row that Chander Paul has gone past 50. Well played, you man, Mr. Consistency. Fourth umpire came out with the second new ball. Carantini replaces Nell, which is indicative of the fact that he's about to take it. Harris goes off the field, and Gibbs comes on. So all's pretty clear. never understand why bowlers when the new balls do and they come on to take it why they bowl a ball with the old one and do that at the beginning of the match no I never understand it too I loved it when they give me a couple of little sighters 
And Shiv's loved it there. Just sits up nicely and says, hit me. And you're probably looser coming on now than you were first over of the day. He probably asked for it now. Now he's got one through the keeper. And Tini's not the only guy who does this. I've seen so many. Here we go. Out it comes. Just cost you four runs. Lots of bowlers do it. I've never understood it. Been waiting for 80 overs to get a new one. End up waiting for 80 overs and two balls. South Africa might want to make this new ball work. It isn't going to be Chanderpaul. It certainly needs to be rammed in and get in the tail. Get an end open. Bit of bounce here straight away. Incidentally, uh, I said right at the beginning of the day that West Indies have played two test matches here and lost them both. I wasn't correct with that information, so my apologies to the West Indies. I, my thanks to a colleague at Sky TV in London. And they lost one and they, they drew the other. They drew the last one that they played here. So I saw a score there, 447, I think it was, and I thought, well, now they managed to lose that. So my apologies. Ball and sundry. Three slips in a gully now. This dislodges the bales at uh, the bowler's end. It sometimes hurts when you hit your fingers on the top of the stumps. Out. That's got to be. Yeah. Dead straight. Little bit of swing, perfect. Get it up there, we just need a telephone. That's all we need, keep talking to them. And they get more wickets. This is an opening batsman. When they keep bowling the ball up at pace and it swings a bit, that's when you make mistakes. See, just holding its line, coming back. Oh, that's missing off, missing leg, knocking middle out. We could have given that out from up here. Well bowled. Yes, he's playing all around it to leg side instead of playing straight. 220 for six. <clears throat> Just playing his fifth uh, test match. Out. First ball, exactly the same delivery, except it didn't hit the pad, it hit middle. Oh, that's a good ball. Not just because he got a wicket, very sensible, didn't get clever trying to bounce him, just pitch it up, let it swing. You know, and another West Indian batsman, Taylor, playing it to leg. You see the bat come across to mid wicket. You know, it makes it more difficult to play the ball if it's swinging when you're coming right around it to the leg side. 2.20 for seven and staying on a hat-trick. Tell you what, if you get on a hat-trick in a test match, you want to be bowling at the tail. And the lad's got exactly there. What can he do? Might see just a little bit of history here. Jerome Taylor. Dot, 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 wicket, wicket. Exactly the same ball, pitched in the same place, hit the same stump. Except the other one hit a pad because the pad was slightly further over to middle and off. 
Well, I think he bowls the same ball again. You know, you can think, oh, do I bowl a York, could have bounced it, but I mean, why change when you've got a good thing going here? It's swinging. We're about to find out. Oh, and he did bowl the same ball again. Taylor up to it, keeps it out. 220 for seven. That's good, accurate stuff. Certainly was there. Batsman had missed, he'd hit. There's the LBW. Pitched outside leg. He would pitch it outside leg stump because of the angle of delivery. He bowls from over the wicket. He's bowling to the left-hander. Well, it's coming in. It's touching down outside leg. Pick it up there. Pitching just outside leg. Good decision by Russell Tiffin. That's a good nut. See, the one before just held its line, and he also got wickets to the right-handers with the ball holding its line. Instead of just going on across the left-hander, sometimes and predominantly, this is what Makayantini does, goes across the left-hander. And it was at a similar stage in Port Elizabeth where Chandapur was in. And Tini came on to bowl and this started to happen with the new ball, the second new ball. Shots of catch it, it's up in the air and over the slips. Just one bounce and four. Two, two, four for seven. And swing. Well, he's getting this second new ball to swing a bit more than he got the first one to. He'll stay in. There isn't a whole lot of bounce. It's nicely played by Jerome Taylor. He's in the last year or so, he's really improved his batting. Really made an effort to be more of an asset in the lower order with the bat. Plays straight, but like a lot of tailenders, think he's a, thinks he's a better batsman than he really is. So he wants to play as many shots as the front line guys. But technically, he has improved a lot. Out. As simple as you like. It was short. He tried to play it onto the onside, or rather, adjust from trying to play it onto the onside to playing it straight. And it popped up off his bat. And the simplest of catches to Dale Stein. Well, they always say when the ball is short, stay sideways, never get square, because then there's nowhere to go. You have to play. And Jerome Taylor caught between the devil and the deep blue sea there. Just pops it up, caught and bowled, staying for eight. West Indies, 237 for eight. Yeah, five minutes he's got to last. It's five minutes to six. There are times when that can be a long time, Bobby. Believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you should. <laughs> I do. Yeah, it makes it rather awkward for Shivnara and Chandapur. Under normal circumstances, he'd start to try and play shots to get those few more runs they need. This is the wicket. Just in an awful position. An awkward position. And look at Dale staying. Can't believe his luck. 
straight into the hands. Jerome Taylor couldn't believe it, done that either. Headed straight back to the bowler. End of the over. 237 for eight. He'll be happy with how he's gone, Shiv Narayan Chand. The ball then would have, would dearly love or would have loved for somebody to stick around with him and be able to be there at the end of the day and bat into tomorrow. And possibly give him the opportunity to get to that hundred, if not just get close to it. It's a good delivery. Dale Stain too will be happy with his work today. He turned up here and having learned from the difficult times in Port Elizabeth, decided to go down on his pace just a touch at the start of the day and just get the ball in the right area. Got it to swing, kept it pitched up. So a marked improvement from Port Elizabeth and that's what South Africa need. Four wickets for Stain. Four for 59 of 20 overs. So it had to bowl the overs. He bowled 41, I think it was, in, in the first test match. Which is quite some work to get through. Well, it's a no ball, but what a delivery. Well, this second new ball is going a little bit more than the first one did. Clearly in illegal territory, that front heel. And when he pitches it up, he really gets it to move. Nicely played by Darren Powell, and that should do it for the day. The umpires raise the bales, and a day that has belonged to South Africa. They've got eight West Indian wickets. 240 runs posted so they will feel as if they've done a good day's work and should be batting early tomorrow yeah runs for chander paul 64 for samuels as well who got 51 they're involved in a good partnership three-figure partnership 100 runs are just over for them and then it fell away ramden came in and got 21 but apart from those not too much Dale Stain, 4 for 60. Makai Antini, 2 for 63. Made the breakthrough with those two wickets. And the wicket each for Nell and Kalasert. The end of day one, 240 for eight, the West Indies.